were unjust and oppressive societies. Pope Gregory I, head of the Catholic Church and a contemporary of Prophet Muhammad, said, What is there now? I ask of delight in this world. Everywhere we observe strife. Fields are de depopulated. The land has returned to solitude, solitude. And yet the blows of divine justice have no end, because among the blows those guilty of evil acts are not corrected. Pope Gregory was referring to the oppression and tyranny he has he was facing at the hands of the Germanic Lombards. He was bemoaning the pitiful condition of the, his world. The city of Rome, the Pope, was not alone in his grief. Almost every society in the world was experiencing some oppression and injustice. Syrian Orthodox Christians were witnessing heavy persecution due to their differences with the ruling Byzantine Church. The Egyptian Coptic Church was also under the persecution of the Byzantine Jew, Jeans, Byzantines Jews. Byzantines. Jews were on the brink of extinction at the hands of the Catholic Church in Spain. It was against this backdrop that the Quran was revealed, transforming not only Arabia but also the rest of the world. One of the reasons for the revelation of the Quran was to bring mankind out of this corrupt state. The Quran proclaimed loud and clear, this is a book which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, that you might bring mankind out of darknesses into the light by permission of their Lord to the path of the exalted in might, the praiseworthy. Peace and justice was not only delivered to the Arabs, but the whole world reaped the fruits of this blessing from God, as we will see the peace and justice emanating from the Islamic system produced some of the most civilized societies in the history of mankind. How the Quran brought justice to the world just how did the Quran and early Muslims go about reforming society? This is the testimony of Jafar bin Abi Talib, who was a contemporary of Prophet Muhammad. Here he informed the king of Abyssinia about the condition of his people and the positive ch change Islam had brought for them. O king, we were an uncivilized people, worshipping idols, eating corpses, committing abom abominations, breaking natural ties, treating guests badly, and our strong devoured our weak. Thus we were until God sent us an apostle whose lineage, truth, trustworthiness, and clemency, clemency, we know. He summoned us to acknowledge God's unity and to worship him and to renounce the stones and images which we and our fathers formerly worshipped. He commanded us to speak the truth, be faithful to our engagements, mindful of the ties of kinship, and kindly hospitality, and to refrain from crimes and bloodshed. He forbade us to commit abominations and to speak lies, and to devour the property of orphans, to vilify chaste women, 
He commanded us to worship God alone and not associate anything with him, and he gave us orders about prayers. Prayer. Almsgiving and fasting. We confessed his truth and believed in him, and we followed him in what we in what ha he had brought from God, and we worshipped God without associating aught with him. The people of Arabia were transformed within a few decades, and they became the torch bearers of a new civilization in the world, a civilization that would change the course of human history forever. Prophet Muhammad and his followers liberated not only their own people, from tyranny, but helped to free their neighbours, the Quran stipulated that Muslims must help the oppressed regardless of whom and where they are. And what is the matter with you that you fight not in the cause of Al in the cause of God and for the oppressed among men? Women and children who say, Our Lord, take us out of this city of oppressive people and appoint for us your, from yourself a protector and appoint for us from yourself a helper.